And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, I am lucky enough to be able to introduce a guy who has been just killing it. He killed it when he was in the UFC. He was there with only, I think, three fights before he went to the UFC. He's a crazy bastard. He has been killing it with his comedy scene. He's got all kinds of podcasts. The fighter and the kid has been out there forever, but now he's into trucks, and I love that about him. My man, Brendan Schaub, how are you doing, stud? I'm good, man. I'll take that intro. Yeah, yeah. killing's all relative, but I'll take it, dude. No, nah, you're good, killing man. it, dude. I love it. Uh, how are you guys, man? man? Doing good, man. We're doing good, man. It's been it's been a long time. You and I were working a lot together for a bit, man. And I always try to tell people that I owe a lot of us doing this podcast and us kind of growing a lot of it to you, brother, man. Like, I mean, there was so many times where I was bouncing things off of you. I mean, even got in contact with Joe and was like, hey, man, I need a little bit of help here. You guys, man, you guys helped me a lot. Kind of organize my, my way through this because I think what you're seeing now is a lot of fighters – they get done. What do they do? They start a podcast and they, you know, they start a gym, you know, and <laughs> but it's, you've got to be consistent with it all. And I, I, I wanted to, cause we had Dean Thomas on, you know, we've had Jens right. Pulver on just as of recently. And, and a lot of them were talking about doing podcasts and doing more stuff. I said, look, as long as you guys are consistent with it, you know, you can't do one show and then wait a month and do another one. It's right. just, you've got to be consistent and being, being proactive and it all. And, and man, that was one of the first things you told me, like if you got to have a schedule, you know, your yep. schedule's got to be on point. You got to run it like a business. And uh, yep. that's exactly so like, how. It yeah, you guys are doing it. You guys are crushing it. You, like, I always tell guys, like, it's no different when you're working at Showtime or ESPN. Like, it comes out same time every week, every day. Yep. You know, those, just don't think it's you and your boy shooting the crap in the garage. Like, take it serious and the fans will take you serious. But um, yeah, when it comes to you guys, I mean, this was a home run. You know, you yeah. guys are great together. And, it's also now the space is it's just different, you know. Even then, when you guys got involved in it, the space now everyone there and their gay aunt has a podcast, you know. So it's <laughs> that's the truth, and they're breaking down fights or they're going for the clickbaity stuff, and it's yeah. it's just not what I do, you know. I'm I'm old mm -hmm. school, man. I, I don't go for the drama and all that stuff. It's just not what I do. So it's just a different landscape now. But yeah, especially when especially with you, Josh, we've always been boys, and yeah. you know I love you, Big John. So any way I can help and. I'll help out guys. Like I, I've talked, I've talked to Sugar about it. Certain guys, you know, and guys are crushing it now. Like yeah. I listen to my dumbass when you got Mighty Mouse, who's you know pound for pound <laughs> goat. Like if he's breaking down fights, don't li don't listen to me, dude. I'm a <laughs> I, 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 I biases, You know, I'm super biased. I pick my friends. Like Mighty Mouse is one of the greatest all time. Listen to Mighty Mouse, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. like Izzy, like Izzy has his own pod, you know. Volkanovski, it's like yeah. why would you listen to a guy who retired 15 years ago you know so <laughs> it is what it is man dude that it is amazing you have now been out of the actual fight game as far as a competitor for going on what close to 13 14 years yeah yes sir my god I know. where does the time go man because it seems like just yesterday i was watching you knock out Mirko krokop and it was like holy shit i know man yeah. it, it goes so fast and that that's my thing too to the to the fighters like i'm sure we'll get into it but like this weekend with bsd man i just want to sit some of these guys down you look at what happened with like darren till's career or sage mm -hmm. north got i want to sit these young guys down patty pym was doing right i'm gonna but guys guys it's a marathon not a sprint uh... Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you rather have a 10 to 15 year career and, and make you're going to make more money, man? I know right yeah. now you want the views, you want the clicks and you want to fight the top five. And I wish someone would have sat me down like, whoa, whoa, shop. You don't beat Gabriel Gonzaga, beat Crow Cop and then ask for a title shot. Like, dude, yeah. take your time, get experience. You're, you're still going to get big fights, but you don't need to fight the top three, top five. Like it's again, it's a marathon. You're going to make more money over longevity than just blitzing for three years. Then you're out of the UFC, man. So th these these guys just want to sit down. I wish their management. And obviously, they want to make money too. I get the business side, fellas. It is a marathon. It's not how long how good you can be. It's how long you can be good in the UFC. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know the other thing is that. Sugar Sean did it right. You know, he had his his contract coming out of the contender series. He waited to fight any top guys. Like, look, whoever he puts in front of me, da da da. da. But then, as soon as he got his new contract, he's like, "Look, it's time for me to start fighting the best guys." 
I think that was a lot of the sit down. You you have to know where you're at financially to say, hey, I want to fight the best guys. Because those guys that are doing what you're doing, what you're talking about, just jumping up, they're getting paid peanuts to fight ranked guys. Why? Why do that to yourself? If you're going to fight there's the also, ranked guys. There's also no direction to go. Like, unless you have all your <laughs> eyes spotted and your T's crossed, when you fight the top five, like you're fighting number three, number two, but those are going to be tough fights. And if you do have a deficiency in your game, those top level guys are going to figure you out. They're going to take advantage of it. It might be born. I guarantee they beat you. And then the rest of those guys go, oh, that's the game plan. Then you're screwed. Yeah. All right. You got your shot. And then you got to go back to the line. It's just, it's not smart, man. Yeah. Once you get to the, once you get up on the top portion of it all, it's that whole thing of you have nowhere else to go but down. That's it. You know, and, and then that's, like, that's why I like, like everyone's pushing Bo Nickel. I love, he's like, well, hold on, hold on. I've been here, what, a year and a half? Chill. Yeah. Everyone chill. Like, he has the right team around him. He's taking the right steps. They did it right. And UFC's learned. They, they, they're doing it right with Sugar. They're doing it right with Patty. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to see Patty fight, you know, fight the top five. It's like, dude, chill. That, But that's yeah. that's where we're at these days. Like, a guy gets one win. They're like, I want to see him fight John Jones. Like, Jesus. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly That's yeah. on the contender series. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> I mean, look, you brought up Patty a couple of times already. Look, and I feel like, and I, I'm not sure if you had said, I'd said this probably about two months ago. Um, the fight to make though, is if you're really trying to build Patty up, give him another fight, one more fight. But I would say if you're going to have the Connor come back, it would be Patty and Connor. Would That's be the what I said. That- and the, the way you're going to get that done, like my path to that major fight. And cause you gotta, Connor can fight anyone, right? Like mm-hmm. he, he, he dictates who he's going to fight. So in order to get Connor to bite on that fight, Patty has to get by a, a Mokano, uh, you know, the guy who won this past week. Yeah. Mokano, so he needs that top 10 win to get at least be in the top 10 because mm-hmm. his star power is there. I don't know. Have you guys interviewed Patty? Have you been around him? No. Dude, I've been, I've interviewed everybody. Yeah. That dude, in like, and I see all the hate online, obviously, but there's a reason why they're hating him. There's a reason why the UFC's, you know, gravitating towards him. That dude just, he has the it factor. Mm-hmm. He's what yeah. he, he, you've been around Connor. As soon yeah. as he walks in the as soon as he walks in the room, commands attention. Patty's no different. But outside Connor, he's the only guy I've been around where when he walks in, you know, oh shit. Oh damn. Yeah. Like he, he just and it's not the way they speak. It, he just has that it factor, man. Now he's he's different than Connor. His skills aren't there yet. He'll right. get there. They build him right. But I think if he gets a McConnell fight, that can lure Connor. That'd be a massive fight, man. Massive fight. Hold on. You gotta go back now that we know that Moicano walked into that fight against BSD with not not a broken collarbone. I've had a broken collarbone, and I'll, and I'll tell everyone right now, look, try to lift your arm up mm, when you got awesome. a broken collarbone. It's horrible. But it it was displaced collarbone, meaning it popped out of his shoulder and is just hanging there. Gage. He went into that fight with it, and no one knew, and the way he fought, you would never have known. Yeah, the first first round ten eight. You know when he took yeah. him down, I'm like that was way too easy, man. Then you find out he's oh. doing compromised, and then second, you know, second round he lost. He just you know hats off to BSD, a special forces guys. You know mentally he's gonna be as tough as they get, so you're not, you're, gonna, you're not gonna break that guy. Eventually, yeah. they're like, all right, just too much. But man, Makano, I knew he was good. I knew I was I've always been high on him. I knew he was good. Yeah. He's entertaining, but when you see that and you find out he's compromised, like oh damn, all right, this dude's a legit contender. Is he gonna be world champion? I don't know. But yeah. he's he, he's damn good. Well, he's are, damn fun on the mic too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he says thing, what he wants. He, he's great. My thing with, with with BSD, like he was my dark horse in that division. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. forces guy nightmare. Here's the thing though: you beat Matt Favola, who's my boy, who but he's not ranked. You beat Matt Favola, then you jumped to Dustin Poirier, who's like number two yeah. at, the, at the time. But it was how well he actually performed against Dustin for a lot of the fight. Mm-hmm. It didn't yeah, matter that he lost. It was Dustin Poirier. Mm. Agree, and that's a, but that's a problem though, because at the end of the day, yeah. it's still it's still a loss. And they go, that's all true. right, here's Mikano. Now look, now where are we at? Now you yeah. you you've, you've ruined your toys. Yeah, <laughs> but, the, but those those are the guys like you were just talking about how you they jump they want to jump up as high as they can, as fast as they can. I don't see what what what's the hurry. No, but that's Enjoy what I love about time. Moicano. Moicano saying, "I want the easy fights." Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, smart. Like, he's being exactly but also mcconnell's been in the ufc people are, 10 years dude yeah yep. so he's he's developed his skills he's won against tough guys he's lost some he's won some he's been he's an experienced veteran guy mm-hmm. and you can tell at his age now he's putting it all together now's yep. the time now yeah go, go go do the now 
better than ever, better than later, before he turned, you know, 30, 32, go do it now. Now yeah. he's seasoned. He's seen every look. He can beat the vets. He can beat the new guys. Now's the time to make a run. But these young kids come in, and USC is guilty as anybody. They catapult them to the top, yeah. and then we don't hear from them. Now, then they're in fucking bare knuckle. You know, the thing with Moicano though is that he got away from having to make weight every single time at one forty five. One fifty five is more of his natural weight. He was killing himself. When you know, you know, as you're a heavyweight. I mean, you don't know as well. <laughs> I've got weight one time. I have no idea what it's like. I really don't. <laughs> you don't. But it's when you're cutting that much weight, you're spending your whole camp focusing on losing the weight than more so than actually getting better. And, and so you're, I, I'm, you're 100 correct, and that yeah. that was. Kind of, you know, I trained with uh, uh, Mark Munoz for so many years, and his thing, he'd blow up outside of camp. Yeah. So his entire, oh camp, his entire camp was not about game plan or anything. It was just about making weight. So he never got better in between yeah. fights. And that that's the one that's the one knock, if, if I was going to give Patty a little criticism, it's how much he's ballooning up, balloon up between the fights. And I told him when I, when I saw him, I, lo- I absolutely adore Patty. I just go, but you're going to get to a certain level. Yeah. Where you, right now you're getting by, you're cutting the weight, and you're beating up these guys. You're getting to a certain level where you're going to need every cell in your body to beat these veterans. Yeah. You're going to come across guys where they're they're tough, man, and it could be maybe in a scramble. You're going to need that extra edge, but you're spending, you're ballooning up to 220 pounds, fighting at 55. Eventually it's going to catch up with you, man. You're getting older. He's not that young. I think he's 28, 29. It's going to catch up with you. To fight at a really high level, you got to be a professional 365 days a year. It can't be just when you get a fight announcement. Yeah. This is your prime. Constantly. This is his prime. This is his moment to capture all these, easy, the, I won't say easy wins, but this is the moments when he should be at his best. And you can't really be at your best if you're getting up to, you know, 200 pounds in between fights. Because the now you're, is you're, your training partners it. change. The, the problem is he's getting away with it. He, he's, your, he's your buddy who you know he's headed for, you know, a tough time, but you don't want to say anything because it's working for him. He's not going to listen. So right now he's getting away with it. He's getting away with it, and then you're going to run into the real, the real, the re- the actual world class fighters. And dude, it's going to kick you in the face. L- literally kick you in the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're he's skating by right now on this stuff. But I mean, like, I wonder what the hiccup is. Are they looking for a new contract? Are they looking what's the deal on when they're going to start making some jumps? But the Moicano fight is definitely something that interests me. But I was saying, like, with Moicano, and then also too with Dan Hooker, those two fights for Patty makes sense. But then where do you go from there? Because everybody else in that bracket is a fucking murderer's row. That, that's why I like McConnell more. De- Hooker's ranked pretty high. He's fought yeah. the best of the best. mcconnell has been around. He is he's a, a turtle in a tree. Ask Moicano. Yeah, yeah. He's a turtle in a tree. <laughs> How did he get there? <laughs> I do great, like, that's great. the greatest line oh, ever. Yeah. I was like, he's like I, 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 where, did he, where did he hear that one from? Agreed. But I uh, get you beat Dan Hooker and you're playing you're playing with the Sharks. I don't yeah, like the nope. Dan Hooker fight for him. Can he I, beat him? Maybe I don't I like it for him. I, I like the Chandler season. fight though. I like the Chandler fight a little bit for him. For uh, Patty. For Patty. Yeah, I like. I that. do like because the, the size, the reach, the ability to you know, the, I just think physically the size is going to be would give Chandler a little bit of a problem. I think after the first round, if Patty can weather the storm in the first round. It starts to become more of an even fight. But then again, you, you beat a guy like Chandler. What's Chandler ranked? Was he number top five? Six? He's number five right now. Six. The problem, see, I don't want that for Patty. It's too much too soon. Yeah, too then much too soon. That, now you're swimming with the Sharks. McConnell's, I think, 11. Maybe they bump up 10. At least yeah. we have five more fights before we get to top five. Because, what, dude, those, that, those top five, and you, you gentlemen know this better than anybody. Dude, you yeah. better There's no shit together. There is no easy days when you're going to fight anyone. That's in the top five. It's a matter of, and I try to tell people, we're talking just not percentage points. We're talking hundreds of yeah. a percentage point mm-hmm. difference is what makes the difference in winning those fights. And that's why you, you could look at, you know, Dustin Poirier is a guy that we talk about all the time. He had the fight with Justin Gaethje. He wins it, then he loses it. And that's the difference. They're both the same yeah. on any given day. Those guys are going to pull out a win against you. And it's, there's nothing that's easy. Yeah, it's all who shows up that night, you know. That's it. it, it Whose biorhythms are better? Who, who yeah. you know, who the hell had a better, you know, Breakfast, meal? Right. Who knows? Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's small adjustments at that level yeah. that get them the victory. But then also in the top five, any of those top five guys can be world champions. It's all about yeah. stylistically how they match up with the current champ, the number two guy. That's and right. If, if that number two guy loses, the number four guy could be your world champion. 
So well, just small calculations. But, but look at look at this. Islam's the champ right now. Sarukian's the only one that hasn't been an interim champ or a champ because then you got Charles Oliveira, champ. Justin Gaethje, interim champ. Dustin Poirier, champ, uh, interim champ. Like they've been interim champs. They've fought for the title. They know what it's like to be on the big stage. I mean, he's they've all got their hands full. You know, Chandler's <laughs> fought for the title. You know, it's like they that top five is murderers row in the lightweight division. I'm a little biased, obviously. John knows is that I think it's the the greatest weight class in the sport. You know, 135, I think right now is better than them. They've got more talent in depth, but over the over the entire over the entirety of the of the sport. Yeah, Yeah, I think the lightweight division is the most stacked division. 35, 45, 55 is where you can have all your talent. For the most yeah. part, we we tried we tried looking when when uh, Poirier was going to end up fighting BSD. I was looking at Poirier's just you know all, all of his fights, and you could take a look, and there was only one fight in there that he did not fight a current or a former champion, and that was Dan Hooker. That's so, that's and so you lucky. look and, yeah. and you yeah. went, holy shit! Strength Every schedule. fight, strength yeah. of schedule. That, that's what crazy makes it different than anywhere else. And people want to argue it all the time, but strength of schedule. There's just no easy days in the office. No. And that, that number 27 guy or 30th guy you've never heard of, he was champ at some former organization. Mm-hmm. He's just waiting for his turn, and he's a monster, dude. Oh. It's just strength of schedule. Hey, I got a, we got a lot of people talking about Roundtree making a good uh, presence on this fight this week, and everyone's saying that he would potentially knock out Alex Bahia. Yeah. He's not. He's I like, I've never he, shot I think he's one of the toughest people to, to face, Alex. I think he's a, he's a problem. He's the he's the best striker he's fought in MMA, and everyone's like, "Oh, he fought Izzy." I'm not I'm not I'm not saying he's a better striker than Izzy. He's more dangerous because Izzy's not a knockout artist by trait. He he has a no. lot of smoke and mirrors. He sets you up if you run. He's a volume fighter, out, but he's a smart, strategic, very high IQ fighter. Right. Roundtree is a knockout artist, and he also has a speed advantage on Alex. Do you and remember he, when they brought in Gohan Saki and who they put against? Yeah, Gohan Saki was. I mean, one of the top kickboxers in the world. I mean, Khalil Saki, Roundtree. Boom. Saki's 90 years old, but I'm with you. That's an impressive. Still. Man. Yeah. <laughs> he's older, but. but he was but, older. He is but your, still. Your, no, yeah, to your point, he's still a legend. But yeah. I, I do think Khalil Roundtree, people aren't giving enough credit. Also, when they're like, oh, it should be Ankalaev. Ankalaev had his chance to. Ankalaev, he it was a draw. And that yeah. he, he had his chance. We've seen how that goes. It wasn't great. And also, Roundtree's won five in a row at light heavyweight. That's tough to do. Mm-hmm. He's earned this. They also have a common opponent in Johnny Walker. Watch the Anklev Johnny Walker fight. Fucking sucked. Mm-hmm. Watch Roundtree Johnny Walker. That's a fun fight. He's earned it. So when people are like, "Oh, he doesn't deserve it," that's more of representation on the light heavyweight division. That that that's that's the division's kind of slim. They fought each other. That's what yeah. it is, man. As far as dangerous strikers, this is Alex's toughest test. Now. Is can round is Roundtree gonna win? I, I won't go on the limb and say that. You know, Alex is a monster, but I wouldn't be surprised. Two okay. guys, we can guarantee there's no grappling at all involved here. <laughs> Roundtree's never shot his career. Alex is batting 100. percent He's one for one. He took Izzy down one time, so he's 100 percent takedown, which is pretty <laughs> legit. But no, but this is gonna be a straight striking match, dude. And Roundtree is a he, he he's a quicker fighter, and he's a southpaw, mm. and he fucking he's a big dude, and he doesn't. He doesn't do a lot of footwork, so somebody's getting knocked out. Take my money, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to land that left hook, though. If for for Alex, I think the one thing is because he is uh, Khalil is a southpaw. It's gonna be harder for him to land that left hook. Yeah, you know, that's his bread and butter. Khalil has a great right hook. Khalil yeah. has a great right hook, man. It's trouble. It could be trouble. I just look at Alex. He's just so damn big for the weight, even at two hundred five. He was huge at one eighty five. He's huge at two hundred five. I mean, the, the talk of him potentially going to heavyweight, maybe down the line. But I mean, he he's a big guy with big power, and his leg kicks, there's nothing on him. But they seem to do damage to everyone that he touches with them. Yep, yep. And the way he checks the leg kicks creates issues for guys. He's just a really high level, calculated guy. He's probably the biggest star in the UFC. You know, everyone wants to see this guy fight. He's not great on the mic, yet he's this massive star. I, I love that, this. It doesn't have to be. He's got that look. Yeah. Everyone goes. Whoa. He has the look because he's knocking cats out. And like everybody else wants to get on TikTok, do these skits all the goddamn time to hype the fight. Alex doesn't even talk. Yeah, and he's nope. just like, yep, and we're buying the fight. Like, that's what I like. That's what I'm, I'm all about that. I think Alex, you know, it's going to get a little weird if, if he takes out Roundtree. Um, or Roundtree, you have, you know, you're, you're always going to have Ann Clive there. And then after that, it, it gets a little weird. I think we're going to see a lot more super fights in the future. You know, because there's not a ton of options for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, between John and Stipe, you know, I think they both retire. Then 
than what freaking Aspinall do. So I think the UFC is going to be forced to create these weird super fights that's ideally is not great for guys like Alex. Like Alex versus um, our boy um, um, Tom Aspinall, it's not a great fight for Alex. No, it's not. Aspinall's a fucking mo- – he's huge, dude. Yeah. And all these – none of these guys are going to risk it on the feet with him. So no. you're going to kill off a star. So I yeah. I, I think it's going to get weird for the UFC as far as depth he, goes at those heavyweight not, divisions. He's not just a big heavyweight, but he's an athletic heavyweight. He moves like a like a 185-pounder, I would say, you know? If I, it's almost like you put his body into like a – into a GSP. Like that's – he moves so well on his feet, his lateral movement, his striking. He's got to work on his striking and clean it up a little bit. He leaves himself yeah. extended. Aspinall does. But, but man, he's got power. He can, but he's got power and he can grapple and he's got speed, his movement. He's an all around. He's one of those new hybrid heavyweights, I guess you'd say, but he's not a small hybrid heavyweight. He's a decent size. But yeah, think, what do you do? Like, like, think about it. John and Stipe, that fight, we just got to get out the freaking way, right? Like, God. <laughs> Dog, I'm fuck. glad you said that because that's the way I look at it. Just get the fuck out the way, guys. Yeah, so they do that yeah. fight. Let's say they both retire. John says that he's going to retire. I assume if Stipe loses, which odds are he loses, he retires. Then Aspinall's sitting there like, I guess I'm champ now, and I fight Cyril gone. Yeah. And then what? We have nothing for him, dude. That's why you're no, going to get super fights. If you're looking to do MMA bets, there is no one better than BetUS. I'm telling you right now, they are fantastic. The odds are great. And right now, if you use our promo code of YouTube 150, you will get 150% on top of what you put in up to $2,000. And if you do it and you add more money later on, it's 125%. So they even add on top of it. Bet US is the very best when it comes to MMA gambling. If you want to make a bet on a fight, you know a fighter is going to win. I'm telling you right now, go to Bet US, use that code YouTube 150. And you'll get that 150% on top of what you put down. You can also use them for NFL, NBA, any of the sports that are available on BetUS. YouTube 150 is your promo code. 150% bonus on your first deposit. 125% bonus on your next two deposits. Don't miss out. Go to BetUS. It's crazy. Yeah. The heavyweight division has always been light as far as, you know, top talent. And it's still in that same position. You can take a look at, you know, Stipe is still a talented individual, but he's older. For you got to sure. be honest about it. And, and getting older, he's slower. John is super talented, unbelievable fighter, but, you know, he, he's done. He's done it all. And he doesn't have to prove anything else. And, and everyone that says the whole thing about, oh, if he doesn't fight Tom Aspinall, it's going to leave a mark on his career. No, no it's not. No. no, it's the thing. Thank you very much. Uh, it's like, no, I'm sorry. That That's just not true. That, that's the thing but about you, John. You don't have to do anything. It's the same yeah. with Connor. Like, everyone's like, oh, he has to fight. If the, They don't no, owe anything. Nobody, nobody owes you any. Those guys did it, Thank man. you. They can just yeah. go do whatever the fuck they want. That's why yeah. I don't – people are like, John, oh, it's going to be such a mark on his legacy. No, it's not. No, it's not, not, at all. not at all. He can literally do whatever he wants to. He's, he's already done it. Yeah. He's got money in the bank. That's, whatever he wants to do, go, go have fun. He's already the yeah, greatest of all time. Dana let you yep. know. <laughs> Dana will tell you. You walk into a room, right? No one's leaving but John. Hey, hey, hey. You know he's got to sell the fight, man. He's got to sell the I, fight. I don't hate on for it. I get it. Get your money, dude. Oh, That's geez, it. man. I mean, ha- having like, like but John, GSP, those guys, like there's nothing you can do to enter to – to ruin their legacy, man. They have no. done. They did what they needed to do in the sport. GSP coming back for the one fight against Biz being winning the title, walking off under the sunset, pissed off the UFC. But he did. He did. But what a was smart best move. For him. Smart move. Yeah. So, you know, you John. Do best do. John That's doing the best do. thing. But let me ask you this, because John and I get into this a little bit. Is it more? Um, is it more like I don't want to say credible, but is it more impressive? John going up to heavyweight and winning the title at heavyweight, and then also being the two hundred five champ forever, however long. Is that more impressive than someone doing it at 135, 145? Like seeing what Max did when he came up and fought Gaethje? Yeah, Max just, is more impressive. Max yeah. more impressive because also, like you look at the matchups that the, what John did at light heavyweight is the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Like he, that's why he's the goat. Not there's no disagreement with there with Dana. At heavyweight though, I don't know. I guess it's impressive that he takes out Cyril Gaon, who's maybe a blue belt in grappling. I don't know. Say, like he, yeah. His grappling's horrible. So yeah. it was just this basic front, you know, guillotine and chokes him out. There's really no controversy there. So it was a perfect matchup for him. So I'm like, all right, we still don't know how good John is at heavyweight. 
And then we're going to find out against a Stipe who hasn't fought in four years, who's older. So then it's like, yeah, cool. You got the belt. Go do your thing. What Max is doing and the level of talent, the level of talent, 35, 45, 55 is exceptionally higher than light heavyweight or heavyweight, not even remotely close. So what Max did is so goddamn impressive. It's not even funny, man. So oh, I, and it's, go ahead. it used to be that the light heavyweight, that was the showcase yep. weight division for a long time with Chuck and Randy and all of them going. And even with when John was coming up, when he was then became champion, there was a lot of studs in there. Agree 100%. There, most of them are gone. I mean, those people are gone, but it, it's just it never got that backfill that it needed to continue on the way it was. So, yeah, what Max Holloway did going up to lightweight and taking on Justin Gaethje, and I think he's smart for taking the featherweight title shot. Josh thinks he should have taken a light lightweight. I don't I'm think with, so, I'm but... With, I'm with, you know, I love you, Big John. I'm with Josh on this. I don't like yeah. him cutting back down to 45. I, That's I, the way, that, that was Josh's thing yeah. about you, you, you did a good job of getting that weight on. Now you're trying to go back down. It's a problem. I don't like it. I don't like well, it. here's the other thing, though. Look, as much as it'd be nice for him to get a feather in his cap, I'm talking almost like the John Jones kind of thing. Like, there's nothing left for you at 145. You know, like, there's nothing. You've already done it all. You were the champ for a long time. You went through the rankings. I'm sure you lost to Volk. You know, and Taporia beat Volk, but it wasn't the same Volk you fought. Let's not pretend yep. he was. Like, at 55, there's new challenges for you there. And there's also two guys there outside of Sarukian and Islam, who are the champs, the number one. The rest of them are all stand-up guys. They're, those are all guys that like we love. I'd love to see those. You know, him and Chandler would be a great fight. Max Holloway and Chandler, he, you know, and then the guys coming up and him and Dustin. Him, I want to see that fight again. I want to see him when he put the weight on properly. You know, there's there's fights there to be had for him. But the two guys you mentioned first, yes, very are difficult. His worst problem. But winning when, two titles division. is a lot more I, impressive I, than I, going I back down that. and winning the same title at 145. Agree. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, my- I'm, me and Josh are spot on this. Yeah. Yeah, this is my exact arguments. And I just at his age too, cutting the weight again. You know, I just and he's I don't still think, young. He's still young though. He's, he's like still young. Two. He's been boys. around forever, but he's still young. Boys. You know this better than anyone. There's, I know he's got mileage. Yeah, there's civilian yeah. years, and then there's UFC yes. dog years. That's true. He's yeah. seventy-seven in fight. I, I didn't say he doesn't have a lot of miles on on that odometer, but because he, yeah, he does, especially in fight around. years, he's, in fight years he's, he's almost as old as John. But he's got a beautiful he's got a beautiful coat of wax. Yeah, yeah great. Okay. The tires like yeah, there's some rust, but it's still good. You know? I love I wanna Max. Go, I want to go back to the John Jones talk though. I saw DC on uh, the podcast with Kamaru Usman and Henry Cejudo, yeah. and, and there yeah. was this this back and forth banter about how John Jones. They're trying to compare John Jones to like the Michael Jordan of MMA. That's fair. I, 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 is it fair? Because I'm kind of looking. I'm, this is not a biased statement right now. Is I simply oh, yeah, am saying now. that he. We're he, both DC guys for yeah. the record. Okay. Yeah. He he yeah. is not to me. I don't think John Joe. I, I think it's also very difficult to put someone in that Jordan era kind of Why? thing. I, Why he's the greatest of all time? But I, I guess for me, not. but no, no. I, 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 I go back to okay. I go back for the the testing. You know that that type of stuff is. Does that automatically disqualify you from being the greatest of all time? Look, you no. had picograms. Josh, you had picograms Josh, in your Josh. system. Gosh, Josh, dude. Dude, that's some casual, dude, bro. You've been around the game as long. How many so, guys do we so know now. that were dabbling in the dark arts and doing sauce? And most people don't know. This is you true. Know, they got away. This is, okay, this is what I told. I told him this. I told him. I said, Josh. I said he goes because Josh's like I got tested all the time. I said, take a look at the way you looked. I go, of course you got tested. Bro, I was tested. They looked at you and said, oh, yeah. All the time. You're going to get tested. I go, but the fat bodies don't get tested, but it doesn't mean that they're not taken. That's that's true. It is the way it is, but there was so much of that. It was so rampant and stuff, and I'm not saying that John is clean on everything he's done, but you just got to look at the fights. But do you put him in the Michael Jordan? Do you put him in the Michael Jordan? Hold on. Let me ask you you this, Josh. Who Who was the best basketball player you ever saw play? Michael Jordan. Okay, who's the best MMA fighter you've ever seen? See, I will always go with GSP. Oh wow, dude! I go well, with GSP. Hold okay. on, well, let me ask and you I, this: and, and, the, and the, love, the level of comp- G- the level of competition that GSP had to face versus the the not so high level no. of competition that John oh, had to face. Look, matter. John John was fighting. Guys, look, I don't get me wrong. He beating Shogun, beating these guys were not in their prime when he beat him. And I'm not trying to knock John. John's talent level Machida, is off Machida, the chart. Okay. 
Machito, yeah, you're, ta- you're, talking, you're talking about Shogun. You're talking about beat Vitor, beat, you know, Gustafson when Gustafson was tearing people apart. Yep. Then yeah, he Gus, beat, was, Gus gave him some beat problems. Corm, beat Cormier twice. Yes. This. Okay. Oh, be, be, I mean, you can go down the list here. I get what he you're beat saying. Everybody there was. Yes. Everybody. Here's the question. We're John. talking Rampage, we're former yeah. champions in Rampage, Rashad yeah. Evans. I get it. All of them. But Josh, are you? But you're. Do you heart of hearts? You think GSP all clean too? No, no, no issues there. I look, John. John's giving me some great advice. If you have no proof, don't say anything like that. There you go. That's I'm, the, I'm with John. I, I, I'm with John too. But yeah. I assume being around the game and being around professional sports as long as I've been, I really don't knock guys too hard. I really don't. Yeah. I assume because because you're just gonna assume GSP. You assume Michael Jordan never did anything, right? We just assume. Yeah, that's assumption. Back then, I mean, but they test sure. though. They test. I mean, I don't know if they're testing him as much because he was the star no. of the league. No, <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying though. Look, I don't know if it's quite because look, Jordan was so dominant, and I thought I think I think John Jones was dominant, extremely dominant. Um, but there was moments where he he just didn't have it. You know what I mean? Like you could say towards the end, the Dominic Reyes fight. The uh, did you see Jordan play for the Washington Wizards? Wizards, thank you. Yeah, what was he like? Forty five. Yeah, <laughs> hold, hold on. John John was a little shit in fight years when he fought, you know, these other cats. You know, it's not uh, like he's this young, like Santos, Dominic Reyes. Like, if if whoa. if I pulled up John's record right now and you looked at how many five round fights he has fought throughout his yeah, career, it's his, all how many? I'm pretty much all of them, right? Okay, just about. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's come wild. On. It is wild. I know yeah. DC doesn't like him personally, and that's okay. I understand why. I just, I'm just not quite you sold cannot, on the. You cannot take away. I'm not taking look, it if you're, away. If you're, if you're going to sit there and say who was the best quarterback that ever played in the, in the NFL, everyone can sit and you know come up with other names. But Tom Brady, he's got yeah. all the rings. Yeah. Okay. And so you look at who, fan, but... who? Oh, so am I. <laughs> but who's the best person that's ever stepped into a cage? Overall, you got to say John Jones. Okay, he so let's just, let's just say John Jones. He's been okay. disqualified. But are Josh, we if, 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 if John Jones isn't your Michael Jordan, who's closer? He said GSP. It would be GSP. It would be, <laughs> but I'm not even putting GSP at the Michael Jordan. I'm not saying. But see, are we putting whoever is going to be the goat now? Are we putting them as the Michael Jordan? Or are we going to wait to save whatever that is, whoever that is, down the line? Because someone's yeah. going to come along and do what John Jones did. I don't there know. will be. I don't know, but maybe. but it'll be another decade. Yeah, yeah, and it's it'll like be the LeBron it, Jordan. It's like the LeBron yeah. Jordan argument. It's but like, it'll also be in a right. it'll also happen again in a very weak weight class, like in the two hundred five. Right now, the two hundred five pound weight class is a very weak weight class, and then going up to heavyweight is even a weaker weight class. That's where I'm not quite sold on. I think it's going to be more impressive to see what what Habib did at, at lightweight, which is the most most difficult weight bro, class, I think. Bro, how did Khabib strength of schedule? He was basically like a, a Pac-10 team. Khabib, <laughs> yeah. the SEC like, Pac-10, his- he's going all the way back. He's not Pac-12 yeah. anymore. He's Pac-10. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. His, 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 the, the knock on Khabib, his strength of schedule was terrible. Okay, it, it was very difficult. I mean, it was not difficult, but I'm saying that it's it's not the level. But it was with, difficult for people, people didn't want to get fight people to him, fight though. him. That's a problem. Everyone Whatever it is, is everybody in 205 is coming at the bit to fight John Jones. Yeah, it's but it's not his fault. But, but other. I will say this, and you can sit there and say, and I've been in the cage with both of them, Habib, and I've said this to Josh, the most dominant fighter I've ever seen Agree. in Agree. the cage against whatever, whatever level of talent it was, great talent, mediocre talent, the guy, I, even the great ones, just Dominic. couldn't stop what he did. Agree, hundred percent. My the only issue on him is strength of schedule ain't mm-hmm. shit. I agree. Terrible. I agree with you. That's that's the one weakness on on his. Yeah, you know, yeah, I agree. Most dominant. But it's hard, like for me to say that like, he's undefeated in the one of the most difficult weight classes. It doesn't matter, like the strength of schedule. The, the, maybe those guys should, never became. Gosh, it should. It should because John Jones, what he's done for that long against all comers mm. and the toughest competition for that long. Trumps what Khabib did. Trumps. Okay, I, I get what you're saying, but I would like to have seen Habib keep going. That's a, that which we're Whose not going to see. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Whose fault is that? You're right. But I'm simply <laughs> saying, like, I put GSP a little bit, um, kind of, I right there. But look, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to hold that that Jordan statue up just yet for any of these guys. 
for none Joe, of them. None of them are by far the closest. There's no one even close. But no one, think. no one goes, no one goes home and goes, oh, John Jones, the miss. You know, he's like this, this person that no one can touch. Like Jordan had that aura about him, like no one can touch him. John had that Jordan, for a long time. John had that for a long time. Then obviously is uh, off the outside the cage antics kind of hurt him there. But dude, jo- Jordan wasn't exactly a fucking sane either, bud. No, there just true. wasn't any social media. You know, just a yeah. little ga- little little problem with gambling. That's yeah. All. He's, he's a he's, there's <laughs> n- 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 notorious stories from good friends. He's a complete dick. You know, but so but we didn't have social media back then. So there's Jordan. You know, he can't do wrong. But it was a different time. No. Um. Where, let me ask you this, because John always asks me this, and I, I want to know. You've been out, like you said, for 13 years. Do you miss it at all? No. No, not once. No. Uh-uh. No, no. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I, do, I do commentating for uh, Game Bread for uh, Jorge Masvidal, and it's bare yeah. knuckle anime. And so um, I was like cage size, you know, like cage size. Uh, yeah. Now I was like, oh, like, obviously that's a different level of MMA, but yeah. I was just like, oh, my God. Like me, I, you know, I'm hardcore in the MMA. I was just like, oh, this is insane. I yeah. can't believe I did a version of this. You know, I just, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I miss kind of the guys. I miss the training. But as far as like, mm-hmm. uh, and having a goal, like I love like when you'd get the fight and you'd have like eight weeks, like I, I miss that, yeah. like the mission, I guess I should yeah. say, and like the training, getting crazy shape. But uh, as far as like, no, 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 not at all, brother. How's your training? How's your training now? Are you still training? Like mitt work, bag work, uh, no, mitt, no bag work. I'll do some jujitsu. There's a jujitsu gym up here. I'll do some of that maybe once or twice uh, a month, if that. But now it's just all about it's dad life. So now it's like I wake up four to five a.m. every morning. I run three miles every day. I do the same lifts every day: bench, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, deadlift, and pull ups. And then I get my kids ready for school, man, every day. Got it. Got it. Hey, you you took a lot of flack for what you said about the Noche fight. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell John what you said? Sure. Well, I, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. I, I, if I explain it, because it gets taken out of context, right? Yeah. I, I, I said you see Noche's like Rainforest Cafe. It looks good, but the product <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I'm being honest. You know, look, I've been in just about every damn big arena you can think of, done fights in, and, and I always said the one, the one place that I did fights and and. You can compare them all, you know, to like the you know, the Tokyo Dome and you know Saitama Super uh-huh. Arena and all those. They're great, but we did UFC 38 was in London at the Royal Albert Hall, and it had like it's just this round. It's not real big, but it had like the red velour, you know, yeah. velvet curtains and everything. And I was like, that's the coolest place I've ever done a fight. It was so freaking. And I when I in watching Noche, I was like, okay, that just beat the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, because hey, here's my thing. I, this, this, this is like taken out of context. This is what I'm saying. So UFC pulling that off, they nailed it. Home run. Yeah. No other major league organization could ever pull off what the UFC did. Kudos to them. Dude, that was amazing. It looked good. I don't care about any of that. My issue is when the venue is the bell of the ball, when the venue is the star, who's that take away from? The fighters. So now you're giving fighters even less leverage. Because if it's just about the venue and the 300,000 cameras and how cool it looks and the ring card girls are dressed in gold and people are just care, they care about the venue more than the actual fights, you, we're not headed down a good road. Also, the, the card was trash because they had to put so much money into the venue. I would rather them fight in the apex with no ring card girls switching outfits every round, with no huge cameras. I'd rather have a great fight card. And they go, oh, you got to be there in person. I don't give a shit in person. I care about the fighter. <laughs> so if you make the venue the destination, if you make the venue the bell of the ball, if you make the venue the main event, the fighters have zero leverage, man. And how people can't figure that out is mind-blowing to me. It's mind-blowing to me. Hold on. They're, you're going to take even more away from the fighters. Because if they just put on bullshit cards, but it's at the sphere – Oh, check it out, man. The ring card girls switch uniforms every round. Isn't it cool? My chair shakes. Hold on. What about the world-class fighters risking their lives and their health? Is that not If that's not entertaining enough for you, you got fucking problems, man. If two world-class fighters doesn't get your blood flowing and you need all these Rainforest Cafe bullshit things in the in the I venue, love the Rainforest Cafe. It's wild. <laughs> it's wild. I'm like, what are we doing here? What but the hell been- are we doing? 
that's been Dana's MO since he had that big fallout with Tito what, years ago, right? Tito kept coming in and going, hey, man, I want $100,000 or I'm not fighting this week, you know, like literally the week of the fight. And he just kept stepping over dollars for pennies, that kind of situation. They just knew like, hey, if fighters, they can be expendable. So let's make it about this. When Dana, when they did the show and they, you want to be a fucking fighter, they realized that Dana had something. And they started was... focusing on Dana being the face of the organization and not the athletes. And then now you're, this is another, another way of making sure that I'm not saying they're not trying to make these guys start certain fighter stars. They need to, because that's what keeps their thing going. But like you said, if they start changing, you know, that it's not Dana, where do we put the focus? We can't have it all always on one person because then when those fighters decide, like they end up having them by the balls then too much. No, bro. It's a little bit of it right now, bro. The most famous people. At any major pay per view, aren't aren't even the fighters. The most famous people are Dana White and Joe Rogan. Yeah, oh, but you got to be By honest. Thought, not even close. The the most recognizable face in MMA is Dana White. Of course, and shout he's out to him. The they've most, done a great. They've done a great job. Yeah, and he's also the most powerful person when it comes to MMA. All day, no all doubt. I'm, all I'm saying is, I'm, I'm all about fighting for the fighters and getting what they're they're mm-hmm. due. All I'm saying is. If you give the UFC an inch, they're going to take a mile. And this was my – this is how I got my start basically in podcasting when Dana White, you know, did the Reebok deal. I went, well, oh, hold on. What are we doing here? And remember, they went away from the logos on the shorts, and people went, no, it's actually – it's it's better, man. It's better for the fighters. You don't have to track down your money anymore. I'm like, uh, what? No, no, it's actually Yeah, well, better. there was a big and difference then, in the amount of money you made. Big, big amount <laughs> difference in the money, which I'm whatever. You know, it's not about me. But now notice – the, the, the Octagon now is, 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 a, is a NASCAR. It's, it, yeah. There's logos covered in the mat, and the fighters have zero fucking logos now. They, yeah. they might have a small monster thing. So people, they go, no, it's actually better for the fighters. No, you idiots. It's a Trojan horse. The same way this sphere is a Trojan horse. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, you don't care who's on the card. Pretty soon, there's not even going to be main events. There's going to say, go to UFC, whatever it is, 475. Why? It's at the sphere. Who's fighting? Don't care. Then then the fighters, they're fucked, dude. They have I, no I, look at, well, I'm telling you right now, when I am outside working and it is blazing hot, the thing that has saved my life this summer is Element. I love Element as a product. We're talking about a product that puts electrolytes, magnesium, and salt back in your system so you can function at your very best. When we're talking about salt, a lot of people think, It's not good for you. Well, that has been proven wrong. It is absolutely something you need. And the best part about Element is they use salt in a way that it actually tastes good. Stay salty, my friend, is a great line. And it's the absolute truth when it comes to Element as a drink. John uses Element out there on the farms. I give it to my kids when they're out there playing sports. Like my son, he's super active in lacrosse as well as soccer. It's good to give it to the kids, keep their bodies hydrated, keep their muscles hydrated. The sodium is good for them, especially in this hot weather here in Texas, as well as for you out there in Tennessee. But hey, if you guys have athletes in your family, make sure you keep them hydrated by using Element. Use our description down below. Use the link, sorry, in the descriptions down below. Make sure you hit that link. And every purchase you guys make through our link, they'll send you a bonus product. Of That's a what's bonus so important, man. You got to use that link because you'll get extra product. It's free. You're getting freebies. Exactly. So make sure you guys use our link down below in the descriptions for that bonus package of product. Every purchase you guys make. I can tell you this. Here's, here's, I'm going to give you a little story background. Before UFC 30, because UFC 30 was when Lorenzo, between UFC 29 and 30, is when Zufa came about. That's when Lorenzo bought the UFC. The first show we did was at the Mark Edis Arena in the Trump Taj Mahal. That's why Dana loves Trump because Trump helped us and stuff like that. And they were, they were going to do the fireworks because Tito Ortiz was going to fight Evan Tanner for the light heavyweight title. Tito was the champion. And they were going to do this firework thing where Tito walking out with all these little things, you know, blazing down and things popping off. Well, they had to do... uh you have to do one for the fire marshal for them to approve it. And it was 50,000. I'll never forget. It was $50,000 for this firework thing. And I'm standing there with Lorenzo Fertitta to watch the firework thing. And he said, and he was talking about, you believe I got to pay $50,000 so this guy can watch this so I can pay another $50,000 to do it during the show. And I said, you know what? But I said, you know, you're making it, you know, special and people are going to remember that. That's great. 
And he goes, look, my, my whole thing is, and he says, I want to be the first promoter to pay a fighter a million dollars. And I told him, I said, well, you, you missed that. I said, Hicks and Gracie's already made over a million dollars. Yeah. 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 And he said, he goes, really? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, we're, we're here to make them stars. And, and, I, and I, I could be the bad guy. I told him, I said, Lorenzo, that's awesome. I think that's fantastic. I said, but you're going to find out very, very quickly. Fighters are hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. yeah. As soon as they have the power, yeah. they're going to ask for more and more. I yeah. said, the one thing that you can control, because he, he, he did bring up the old UFC and he said, you know, they kept on trying to promote the UFC. I said, the one thing that they could control was yep. those three letters, UFC. Yep. I said, they had the control of that. I said, you never have total control of the fight. You're spot, you're spot on. You're spot on, John. You're, you're not lying, especially from a business model. The NFL does that. Is that yep. You don't care who's the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. You're a Green Bay Packer. You're an NFL fan. Mm -hmm. NBA, same thing. Michael Jordan goes. NBA is fine. So every other major organization does that. Mm -hmm. I just – if you don't say anything, you don't fight for it, bring it to attention. Everyone's like, oh, Shab's such a hater on the UFC. Now I bleed UFC. Cut my veins. I know, dude. I get the same thing. It's like, oh, you just hate the UFC. It's like, no, no. are you fucking nuts? I love the UFC. I, try, I help make it, you stupid yeah, shit. Dude, I, I, but I, our business model's off the UFC. I love the UFC. I, you know, my, the, the, I'm an Ultimate Fighter alumni, UFC alumni. I absolutely adore yeah. the UFC. But I'm also not a shill. I'm not paid from the UFC. So when I see something, I know how this goes. So I go, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, no. The sphere is a bad idea. Everyone's, oh, you're such a hater. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. What's going to happen is it's going to take even less away. It's going to take even more away from the fighters. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. They're going to do what I have no control. I'm just bringing it to attention. And people are like, you're such a hater. I'm like, all right. It's yeah, you, brought up, you brought up the Reebok deal. Then now it's Venom. I don't know what Venom's paying the fighters. I don't know if they are or whatever it is. But, I mean, I can give you guys an example. For the Benson fight, I made $86,000 in sponsors. Just in sponsors. I mean, now that went away two fights later when I fought Tony and I was wearing Reebok. I got paid nothing for the Reebok stuff. They gave me a bag of clothes and some shoes I never wore. Yeah, but you got clothes. Yeah, you know Gosh. what I mean? Like th that's what, how much it drastically changed. I mean, you're, you're affecting what I was making. Correct. You know? and, and, and like you said, and I don't know if you guys remember this, is what they would do for you to get sponsors. They would have you send in your sponsors and your sponsors had to get approval from them. And then they well, would also basically blackmail those sponsors, not blackmail. They would say, Hey, if you want to sponsor him though, you got to sponsor the event. Correct. Well, that, that, that came about off of affliction. Yep. Now, all of a sudden it was the, the sponsor had to pay a fee mm -hmm. to allow the fighters to wear their stuff. It was a hundred thousand dollars for you to approval. even. Yep. 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 Yeah, and it was, yeah, it was it was based on your it was based on what your incomes. They asked for these companies' business, uh, what's it called their their payroll or whatever it was. Yep. They asked right. for their finances. Yeah. They wanted to see what they yeah. make. Again, all this, all good. All UFC is going to do UFC things and and make their money. And the, every organization or even Apple, you know, it's, there's some shady stuff and it's business. Oh. It's good for their business. I, I, and I'm fine with all that. Mm -hmm. Like I own a business, I get all that stuff. I'm just saying it's okay to say, hold on, fighters. Just so you know. You guys keep, you know, jacking off this sphere card and they do the, you know, let's do this every year. Then it becomes every month and then becomes, you know, I'm just telling you the way this is going to go, you guys are going to have less leverage as this moves on. Yeah. It happened with your sponsors. It's happened with the TV right deals. It's, it, it, it just keeps moving down. Do your thing. I can't do anything. I'm just saying it might be something to pay attention to. Yeah. I wanted to touch you on, talk to you about this though, is uh, Dana saying he's going to be for sure jumping into boxing. Hell yeah. I, I, What's your take on it? And John and I have been saying, like, look, if, if they do a lot of these fights overseas, which it sounds like they're gonna, there is no all the act over there. It, you're, if you're in Dubai, you're in Riyadh, you're in, they, they don't need to impose the all the act over there. If you want to come make money over here, you can come make money over here. Now it's when For they sure. get back into the States or they go into other countries, if they can get away with it moving forward. And will these boxers be able to jump on board going, yeah. hey, yeah, there, there's two sides there. So yeah, with the whole Aliak thing, you know, Aliak that you know, it's it's the dark world there, and it's boxing, so that's going to happen whether Dana gets involved or not. As far as a promoter goes, there's nobody in boxing in MMA better than Dana White. Yeah. So if he can bring and people go look at his business model, yeah, you're talking about the only major MMA promotion to actually make profit. The dude knows what yeah. the fuck he's doing, and boxing's a disaster, a disaster. And Dana's like, we'll see if, if my business model works over here. I'd be willing it does. He's going to bring so much value to boxing. It's not even funny, dude. Yeah. So him getting involved with it, great. And he has the back end of the Saudi, so they have money, so he can give us the fights we want to see. And boxing's promotion sucks, let's be honest. 
So you have Dana's marketing machine and money and his knowledge of putting fights together. It's a home run, man. It's a you home gotta, run. You got to remember, HBO Boxing shut down boxing. They're like, we're done. It took Showtime a while to get rid of their boxing. And that's really what collapsed their programs. Yep. It's like they were they were spending so much money and the product wasn't there. And the, the fighters were making a ton of money. And I'm happy for them. But the sport itself started to die off when those two organizations left or not, or the TV networks dumped boxing. So now what are you going to do there? I mean, I also just saw that uh, direct TV just sold. Um, I want to say 70 percent of their stake or whatever to uh, to either Saudi Arabia or Dubai. Oh, wow! so that was just happened, I think, yesterday or today or something like that. So. Yeah, Look money talks, but I think Dana get involved is huge for boxing. Like he knows what he's doing. He knows. Well, you, I, I wonder if that's why Oscar was at the Sphere, you know, because I, I think that he was he came with Turkey also, and so there was this little thing I think where they're trying to gather up what Eddie Hearn. You've got uh, you've got uh, you know, Golden Boy. You've got Dana. They're gonna need their boxers to to jump on board. I mean, otherwise they can try to sign them separately. Stand by for a guy named Al Heyman that's gonna Dana's yep. gonna be working with. Uh, yeah, monster. Just, just tell you, look at Tom Loeffler, who he is working with mm -hmm. in the boxing world, is big time uh, contributor with Al Heyman. Mm -hmm. So they get along really well. That whole thing is gonna come about. I, I honestly look at it; it's gonna be similar to what happened with the PGA. You can sit yeah. there and have your PGA, and you've got the the Bob Arums and the you know, we'll say match, you know, match room with uh, Eddie Hearn and all them. It doesn't matter because you have this money that Dana, by using the money that Turkey's going to be able to put into that, he's going to be able to just talk people into, hey, this is what I'll do for you. Yeah. This is all you got to do is come yet. You're going to be fighting a lot of your fights over here for a while, but we're slowly going to be then starting to come back. And I'm, you know, I'm a Vegas guy. I'm going to be getting back into there. Correct. And, it's it's just a matter of time before he takes it over. And the other thing you're the other thing you gotta realize too, John, is the other thing Dan, like when you think about boxers, like super high level boxers, they're spot they're usually not doing much in sponsorship. They're, no. It's very rare. They have to get a certain level. Roy Jones with Nike, uh, Andre Ward with Nike, but it's very they're not very good in sponsors. Dana's gonna have them making money hand over fist and sponsors to be plastered all over social media. So the, the amount of money and value you can bring to a, a boxer is insane. It's a home run for data. I mean, but guys like Canelo don't sound like, doesn't sound like he's willing to jump on board. But Canelo he's also, he doesn't need Canelo to. sits in his own world though right now. And not many people sit in that same world. Yeah. But when they take, and it all will the, go away when they take all of his competition, he's going to have nowhere else. I said to go. it will go away. Yeah, it will, it will go, go away. That's how you do but that's why you're not getting the Benavides fight. Everyone's like, oh, Canelo owes it. He's like, no, he doesn't owe you anything. No, he doesn't owe you dude. anything. He's made all his money. Yeah. He's kind of in that John see, Jones era right now, right? This, He's like, this, I can just that, write off and be good. That's exactly what people don't understand. It's like with Canelo, yeah, you know, he can sit there and he can say, I don't, I'm not going to fight Benavides. I'm going to fight, you know, whoever, Berlanger. But in the end, it'll be the point where people don't pay to watch. And when people don't pay to watch, you're not going to make the same money. And that's true. Yep. Yep. And that's that's going to end up coming up based upon what Dana coming in with all the marketing behind him and everything. Look out. The last thing I want to get you out of here on this is. Oh, uh, no, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 Sorry. no. Okay. <laughs> Hell with fighting. We are now going to talk yes. about that's my what, man. <laughs> that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. All right. I'll let you go. Then we can. I, I was, own a TRX. I love that truck. Oh, so you're it's going TRX awesome. way. I'm going to go another you, direction, but you go ahead and you go TRX had a, way. You had your TRX. You rolled that bitch, right? I was. I watched the whole thing. Total that bad. I was, oh, dude. I was, I was like, oh, dude, that's horrible. <laughs> but you have come back. Oh, yeah. You have come back. At first, you went to the Raptor, but you were giving it away. Yeah. You came back to the TRX, and you have what I call... Not you know it's not a TR it's a monster truck yeah. thirteen hundred <laughs> horsepower it's a devil crazy. truck dude and that that's my daily driver I drop the kids off at school <laughs> straight pipe it's it's dude so that straight wild. pipe coming out the side is incredible yeah it's wild yeah that when I when I originally wrecked the my original TRX that sandblast edition I love that that's a great dude, I I just got it. Yeah, had it all tuned. It was like over right around a thousand horsepower. The wheels, the king suspension. I literally just got that two days before. Then we took it out to Johnson Valley. We we're shooting out there for like six, eight hours all day, shooting all this crazy shit. Last shot of the day, my producer goes, Hey man, we just we didn't have the drone and stuff right. And it was cold out, so the ground was hard. 
And he goes, yeah. um, we just need one more. Are you doing the spin out and driving off into the distance? I'm like, ah, oh, dude, I don't want to. He's like, just one more. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Sure enough, traction control, which we could, we're able to turn off. Yep. I don't tell the kids how you turn it off, but we're able to turn it off. For whatever reason, that last time, traction control went, you know what? We're going to turn back on. Maybe not. <laughs> and dude, just whoosh, oh. you know, sold my freaking car. But um, yeah, that, that was a scary one, man. But, you know, I turned uh, lemons into lemonade, and that got me into off road racing. I got sponsored by Polaris. Uh, nice. I'll be at the top of the 300. I did the mid 400 after that. So now, now I do off road racing because the, the, the off road community reached out, like, yo, let us teach you how to actually do this so you don't wreck more cars and flip them. <laughs> so you don't kill yourself. You know, so yeah, so you don't kill yourself, man. So yeah, it's been great, man. And then insurance covered all of it, got a new truck, and I was like, well, I gotta go bigger, faster, and louder. So we turned this thing into a one of one absolute monster, man. That it same is color is awesome, man. I love the, the yeah. one you had. Yeah. yeah. Dude, his his truck now is all carbon fiber on the front end, all carbon fiber on the back end, and and the TRX cab with it's which wild. is blue. Yeah. It's uh yeah. it's it looks cool. great. Yeah, it's four inches wider than a Hummer, so it's it's a it's a monster. No, oh. but you were just talking about how this is your daily driver to take your kids to school. Yeah, that yeah, the daily driver that I I, I do have a Humvee, I have a Hummer H one, uh, mm -hmm. the two door and the four door. So in the mornings they can pick, man. And lately they've been picking a Hummer which doesn't have doors. It's a straight military Humvee, and they like and their mom's like, I hate when you take them that because there's no door, so their hair gets all messed up. So the, I drop <laughs> off at school, and their hair is just freaking. That's they awesome. love it, man. They love it, dude. Oh, that's great. Dad um, life. You, you, uh, yeah, you're you're living the dad life, and I just started a new podcast with uh, Rich Chow, who you know, and uh, Bobby Lashley, uh, former fighter slash W. Yeah, so both it's called a dad dojo. But we, uh, I definitely would like to get you on one day. It's in studio stuff, though. So next time you're out here in Texas, I'll try to get you on. But I mean, yeah. talking about being a dad, you're you're in the travel ball scene right now with with your son. Baseball. My son's in the travel ball across. Everything is out of state. Nothing's in Texas at all. It's all Denver, DC, Utah. It's everywhere but Texas. We got like one or two tournaments in Texas. You know, out of the whole year. It's a full time. Um, yeah. What's what's your what's what's the most gratifying thing when you're watching all this go down with your son? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... I guess just him having like a goal, you know, like, like him, because he has my heart in him. He has that work ethic that like grind, like I'll, I don't care what he's into, whether it was drawing, baseball, basketball, football, fighting, whatever, it, as long as you go for it. And he has that work ethic in him that, that I got from my dad. So um, when he said, you know, baseball is his thing, I'm like, let's ride. And I was like, if you're going to do this though, yeah. there's, there's two ways to look at it. We can do it and it's fun and you're just playing, you know, in the rec league in the fall and then maybe in the spring and summer you play football and do that. We can do that and get fun. Let's see how it goes. So he signs up for that rec league and he never played before and we're training every day. I'm getting ready and you MVP of the season and right. clearly the kid's athletic. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Maybe there's something here. And so I told him, I said, yeah, funny. He goes, yeah, I go, there's another level to this. We Again, if you choose this life, you're going to miss out on birthday parties. You're going to miss out on holidays, but it, the juice is worth the squeeze. And he's like, let's ride, Dad. So in mm. the summer, we didn't do any vacations. We went on one, but it was just the, the whole summer was dedicated to him getting better at baseball, man, making the travel ball team, the all-star team, and he did. And so it's just – I there's nothing more – I don't know. It just makes you super proud when you see him working for something and he, and he just doesn't stop. I love it, man. I love it. And I just support him all the way. And I'm not this crazy baseball dad. I, I actually watch from the side where he can't see me. To, I don't add any pressure. And as soon, whether he's played his best game or his worst game, we get in the car. I'm like, uh, two things you're most proud of today. What, what, what are you happy? And dude, we played some fucking Cuban team last week in Chino. <laughs> They're all 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but we lost we lost 30 to one we lost 30 to one we couldn't get out of the inning it was like a black yeah. mirror episode for dads it was awful we got in the car and he's just wrecked dude, dude. he's wrecked yeah. and yeah. i just told him i said there's levels but there's levels yeah. so that, yeah. that that's the level you got to get to man and I, I was trying to see like oh well let's go home let's do this he's like let's get to work let's go to the cage mm. and we went straight from spending all day getting his ass whooped and he wanted to go to the cage he went straight to the cages and to me i'm like no matter if he makes the mlb who knows you know it's one in a jagillion chance there but 
with that work ethic and him learning to lose and come back and fight, like whatever he wants to do, he'll be successful with that work ethic. That's all I care about. He's one it's time one to sport. get the batting cage at at, Bre- at Shab Manor, man. <laughs> yeah, brother, you ain't lying, dude. You ain't lying, man. Uh, uh, just the one sport, though. Just just baseball. It's all in on baseball. He's all in on baseball and football. Okay, loves, both. He, but baseball's really his thing, but he loves football. And I was his coach in football. Went undefeated. It's humble brag, they went undefeated. So the season will start back up here in uh, January. So. Uh, yeah, he, he loves both of them. It's tough too because I started playing tackle when I was six, mm-hmm. and there's a there's a tackle football team here, and they're they're it's wild. He's eight. They're recruiting him now, and they're like, man, let's get him out here to practice. And I just, I you know, it, no it's, need, no. It's just tough. I, yeah. I started playing when I was eight. No need, not yeah. right now. Yeah, that's what I say. I, I think another two years of flag, and then we'll see where he's at. But uh, I'm usually that dad's like, that, yep, let's go. But that was the first time I went. Ah, let's pump the brakes here a little bit. Yeah, yeah we're. I'm in Texas, man. So we're the the mecca of football, you know. And so these young high school kids, even the parents around here, are like, nah, our kids are not playing tackle until they're in sixth or seventh grade. They, they're like, there's no reason to. Right now, they're learning how to run routes in flag football. It. You know, to, what is it? Uh, touch. They're playing touch. They're yeah. playing seven v seven. Yeah, get yeah. It. They're learning the skills. They're learning the routes. They're learning how to read off of there. Like my son, he plays flag, and he's he's got the little wristband on his wrist. Okay, play 17, play 17. Everyone's got their color-coordinated wristband, and everyone's running their routes. They're learning how to get lined up, learning how not to jump off sides, you know. They're they're learning the fat kids. The fat kids, you know, there's no line in uh, 7 on 7, but they'll figure it out. (laughs) Like my wife, you know, my wife is Latin. She's pretty gangster. And when this coach was recruiting Tiger to to play tackle, she's like, you started playing tackle at 6, you're good. I looked down, I'm like, am I? <laughs> I got some issues. Like, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's one of those you look at you and you never know what's going to happen with anything. But it's like there's when it comes to kids, let them have fun in the beginning. Yeah, it becomes it becomes hard work later on. Let them have yep. fun. Hey, everyone, the Weighing In podcast was the very first podcast that ever had a relationship with OF. And our relationship was in trying to bring, bring combat athletes and fans together. It has been working. We've got a ton of people who are on OF now, fighters that you can go, you can sign up with, you can ask them questions, you can look for techniques that they use. It is a fantastic system. If you are that person that wants that one-on-one interaction, OF is the easiest way for you to do it. Yeah, you guys, check out OnlyFans. Subscribe to us over there. It is free. We have continued our partnership with them, and we're going to be there for at least a couple more years. Well, that's the hopes. Ooh, yeah. And look, we're enjoying working with them. They are a great company in terms of also bringing other athletes on. They're working close with Formula One. They're working close with a lot of combat sports athletes. They just signed Billy Kemper. Billy Kemper is now on their platform. Also, giving awesome surfer. surfing. Amazing surfer. Giving extra information. If both of you guys don't know the background on OnlyFans, OnlyFans was originally started for for sports, for yeah. soccer players, the European soccer market, having coaches being able to sell their information to their closest fans or people that really were driven to try to be the best. This is what it was produced for. That's what we're going to be trying to do. We're providing the extra content over on OnlyFans. Make sure you guys subscribe to us over there. It is free. There will be some stuff that we charge for, but right now our pro- our page and all the content we put on there is free. So subscribe to us over there at OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah. So it's all I, good. I read, a, I read a thing when we were doing the dad dojo. I read a thing that said basically 80% of kids quit their sport inside the car on the ride home. Yeah. And I think some of it's because of the, the parents, the dad or the mom or whatever. It's like, oh, oh you could have oh. done this. You could have done that. And it's, it's, it's very difficult, man. I catch myself sometimes. You know, yesterday we had a we had a tough one, man. We were up two zero in soccer. So he's on the travel club team for that too, and he's he's two up up two zero. He's the lead center back, you know. And then they end up losing five three, and he just the meltdown I could see in him have in on the field, not like a not mean or negative towards other people, but just looking at me going, why can't these guys get it together? And it's not so much his team. It's just that why can't we play as a unit like we did in the first half? Why can't we play the whole game? How old the are they? How he's old are ten. They? He's 10. Yeah, I look at him and go, oh, they're 10. That's why. Yeah. That's yeah, why. yeah no, but it's 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 hard. When he gets in the car, he's just I defeated, don't... right? You're, and then it's a look on his face. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, we he's like, we just didn't play. I'm like, yeah. I go, you know, look, this is this is what happens. At this age, you guys got to – the hardest part is learning how to play the whole game. You guys played the first half. You didn't play the second half. 
and you guys are having and it's hard like it, whether it's baseball it doesn't matter what sport it is you gotta are, play are, the whole are, game are the parents in soccer my kiddos don't play soccer uh which i'm thankful for but um are the are the parents are the parents, <laughs> are, the parents are the parents in soccer are there crazy soccer dads like in They're baseball not, it's Everyone's mainly cool. it, crazy soccer moms moms oh, are yeah. yelling and screaming at the, the refs and oh. Literally, like here though, they the ref the refs have a little bit more control here. They turn to you and say, "Hey, that's your one warning. If I have to tell you again, you're going to be kicked off the field, and I'll have security yeah. remove you." That they will remove parents from fields here. Yeah, b- baseball dads and moms, like everyone warned me about. It. I'm like, no, come on, these yeah, kids are like, oh, yeah. dude. I saw two moms at the we are in a Santa Barbara tournament. The, the moms were about to throw down. I'm like, yeah, we're eight. Yeah. Who gives a shit, man? And then and they like, do. I'm, I, they do. It's, it's <laughs> oh. really, they become consumed with their kid having success. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I want my kid to do well because he works his ass off. But I, like I said, I don't sit with the dads I, and the rest of the parents. I sit off on my own because I'm a passionate dude and I, I like to cheer and I'm loud and I don't want to take the focus away from my kiddo. Yeah. But again, we had, we had this game yesterday. I had no choice, man. There's nowhere to go. I'm like, God, I feel like this is trouble, whatever. I'll, I'll be able to control myself. And then the you know the the ump was making bad calls. Then my son made a mistake, and I just yeah I can't help. I just went. I yelled out the f word. I went fuck, and literally everyone's all. <laughs> and my wife goes, get out of here. Get yeah, out. go. Hey, so you see, so you got booted like you were in Texas, <laughs> bro. I literally stood up. I looked at them. I I am so sorry. I looked at my son. I went, my bad, dude. I looked at the parents. I'm like, I'm, this is why I can't have nice things. I was I'll be over there in left field. I, was, I dude, I was so embarrassed. I, I was awesome. so embarrassed, man. Oh. Brendan, before we leave, we can see you on Fighter and the Kid. I want to say, oh, is it Gas Alley or what is it? What is I, what you I doing? like it. So, Fighter and the Kid, Shop Show, and then, yeah, the Dry Fast All Gas. We have our second giveaway being announced. It's a SEMA build. So, I'm building a special car for Roush and Magnuson. It will be, nice. we're dropping it at SEMA. So, that's the first week of September. So, yeah. You're going cool. to showcase it at SEMA or is, is yeah. it that's where the person picks it up? No, we'll, show, we'll, we'll announce it at SEMA, and that's where people can enter to win. They'll be able to enter Ooh. to win online and at SEMA at DriveFastAllGas.com. This one's a special one, man. It's going to be fun. John, we can't win because we're friends with him. Can't win. Can't win. Sorry, what, you screwed. This is, hold on. This is wrong. I'm going to send my, rule, I'm gonna send my son to, to go apply changed. for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have the kid open like a 10-year-old yeah. one? Yeah, a yeah, 10-year-old one. Oh, yeah. I got grandkids. I got grandkids. They're they're signing up. Oh, Love it, man. Appreciate you guys. Miss you hey, fellas. brother, hey. I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you for all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mr. Brendan Schaub.